Hello. Welcome to my garage. Just kidding. Um, today, we're going to break down Demise 2. We're going to go over the mastering. We're going to go over the saws, the basses, the drums. Um, it's a bit of a complicated project. It's a bit long, but I'm going to try to keep it short as much as I possibly can and with the power of editing. So let's just get into it, I guess. So, okay. Where should we start? Master. Just showing this to make a point. This isn't doing anything, right? The only thing I really have on the master that's doing anything is this. This is the only thing on my master. And I normally don't put anything on my master, but I wanted to know how it sounded running through this tape because I knew I was going to use this tape when I was mastering. So I have it here. This is just to look at the spectrum and to do a little top-bottom filtering for testing stuff. This is running to OBS. This is just to make it louder so I don't clip my sonar works. I don't have anything on my master when I'm making music, just as a general rule. I think the master exists to enhance the song. It's not necessarily a crutch, right? Okay, so number one question you probably have is the saws. Right, so turn the side chain off. I really need to make a longer video on this. <laughs> but there's kind of a standard process for how I do my saws these days. Um, and it effectively has to do with layering. So we have this saw, which is the main one. Which is just an old patch that I made a long time ago. I don't know what it is about the top end of this wavetable. I just like the way it sounds. It's a bit detuned. Right? We get a layer called middle, which is just very centered. We got a layer called hyper, which is AU5's hyper saws, because I liked the way the top end sat on this one. And that's the point, too, is the layering should fit the song. There's no, like, this layer works for every single song. These are the saws I use for every single song. It's about the, like, feeling you want out of what you're doing with super saws. And I wanted them to be like ethereal and wide and filling out a lot of space, not necessarily being super in front, but being a little bit in front. And this helped achieve that because it's very like noisy. It's very like sitting in the back sounding because of that combing that's going on from the weird um, chaos oscillation thing that he did. Then there's this vocal layer, which is just sort of a formity sounding wavetable. And then there's Shimmery, same deal. I, I don't know why there's no low end on that. Oh, I cut it out. Um, and then I usually like to have one organic layer, in this case, strings. Session strings too, they're pretty dry. I like the way that sounded, and then all together that's like this. Just some, you know, EQ, getting rid of that DC offset. Warm tape on Saturn for glue, a little more EQ. I filtered out the high end and compressed them together. Um, and then this is just to look at the shape of the frequencies. And then I cut out the high end because I added the high end back in via noise. Just filtered out like this. But then those two together are like, you know, it, it adds a less aliasy, less distorted sounding high end. And that's especially something that I wanted in this track because I don't want that sort of grit from these necessarily. Um, I wanted them, you know, to be wide and ethereal. Although, speaking of grit, then I have my bass layers. Uh, I try not to do crazy shit on bass layers with Super Saws, but we had this, which is just like a serum preset that I modified slightly. And then this one, which is just some like FM thing I did. I don't even know why I did this. I'm sure it was in the old Demise project or something. And then all those together sound like this. You know, the grit is being glued together. I turned down the side a little bit because saturation, turn down the sides, use this Neve to push the high end because I like the way it sounds, um, compression, and then I clip them together using AP Shaper. Just a little bit. It's like very easy free headroom on these kinds of things. Um, and like without it, it's just like the slightest bit quieter and the slightest bit less distorted. But the whole mix is distorted, so I didn't really care. And then side chaining. And then we have a separate sub.
I have a sub patch that I use for almost everything. I learned this from Protostar and Mr. Bill. Mr. Bill has a video about it, where basically you just draw in the harmonics to get a sort of squarish shape so you get the most sub out of the most headroom. So it's not eating up your headroom. And then the sub sound cleaner. Now it's very full. And then it's all about getting the level right, right? So we look at this. Saw us sit about here. Okay, so then we want the sub to be like right here. There you go. And this is at a 3 dB slope. If you have your frequency analyzer on a 3 dB slope, generally you want it to look flat. So that's the saws. And now we'll do the bases. Um, just really quick, because it's just a bunch of different things. This one's kind of cool. It's the original bass from the original Demise. But I put this vocoder on it to make it kind of like color base E. It's a cool character. I just didn't want to use it too much, but I used it right here because it was, you know, modern sounding. And I used this carrier, which is just like a seventh chord, I think. Right. You have this one that goes. It's just like opening a filter. And then this thing. It's just like this. And then this Reese that I use all the time. But then there's like this main bass, um, which is I'm sure what you want to hear. So this is the old roll, as I layered, as I named it. And then I just EQ'd out some of the low end. This is because this was being obnoxious. Um, you can see like the first harmonic, second harmonic, I guess, is being really loud. And you really don't want that to be louder than your sub because then the mix is going to sound less powerful. You know, like if we go in here, this whole thing, and then we like boost this. It sounds really woofy. It doesn't sound like we want it. You want this to be sort of progressing down from the sub. So we layered this, cut out some low end, did a little EQing. And then this thing, which is from the cover me and Cyber Lily did of Headlock. You should go check that out if you haven't already. So we have main layer, sub layer. Sub layer is just... I cut out the sub and then I put a filter, or not a filter, a frequency envelope on it, master tune, to make it impact a little bit. And then I have this macro opening. As it gets bigger, it sustains more, so it's more plucky. We start with this. But I'm going to tell you right now, this is not how I did it, right? Like, I did not do it bottom up like this. This filter was already here, and then I added all of these things, right? Added a fatturator. Cool. I added a comb filter. And I did that to pull out some of the lower frequencies, because I wanted to push it back a little bit. I saturated it. I EQ'd it. Just to get rid of some DC offset. Turned it down into a decapitator. U UAD oxide tape. And then I cut the low end out. But I guarantee you, it did not look like this before I did it. I added all of this and then I tweaked this version. You know, I like changed the filter. Whatever. I changed the waveform. I changed the position. I changed the amount of FM. This is not bottom up. This is like running it into a bunch of stuff and then tweaking the original settings and being like, what sounds cool? And that's the sort of like design philosophy I go with with my sound design in general these days, unless it's a sample and then I can't do that. And then in the first verse, this is the same bass, but without the plucking. I thought it'd be a cool like call and response kind of thing. For the basses, sidechain, what I'm doing these days is for the kick, you want your sub to be completely out of the way because 
doing this kind of music and having two subs playing at the same time is usually just a recipe for a disaster unless you can somehow align them every single time. So what I'm doing here is every time the kick plays, it is ducking out completely for a 16th note. And that's triggering from audio. This plugin is great for that. Usually what I do with it is I split it and then I will turn the mix down on the high part a little bit. But I just didn't do that in this instance for whatever reason. You know, like side chaining your bass to your snare is less important for frequency clashing reasons. I don't know why this is easier. So. All right, speaking of drums, here are the drums. You'll notice um, that it sounds uh, kind of like there's a thing going on. Please ignore that. So this is a kick. This is a kick that I made for Astral Wandering. Go listen to that if you haven't. And then I layered it with this. Make it a little bit more clicky. Added some decapitator. I just like the way that sounds like kicks usually. Did this EQ. Give it a little bit of harmonics. Form transformer. Super white. And then I did some clipping on it. Some. It's a lot of clipping. And then this snare, which I built from some other snares. We have this one. This one. This one. And this one. And together that sounds like... But I, if you'll notice, the snare gets shorter. Right there. Quick tiny tangent, I forgot to turn this reverb back on. What I'm doing here is side chaining this to itself. So every time this plays, it ducks the reverb. Cool. Anyway, you'll notice that this snare is shorter. Because if it wasn't shorter, it sounded like, and that was just getting in the way of everything. So what I did, the symbol that was going ta, so this one, I had a limit on it. So if I turned it on, it's a lot shorter. And then without it, just allowing the um, tail to come through in certain moments and not necessarily in other ones, just by like setting up a, macro to the decay. And then I had the second snare. This one I wanted to be a little deeper. I wanted it to have a little bit more reverb as per the original. So we have this one, this one, and this one. This is a medicine snare. Tapey snare. Um, and then that is going to this reverb. This first reverb doing this reverb thing that I also did on the saws where it side chains to itself. It. it just allows it to come through cleanly and also have a lot of reverb. Um, and then this automated reverb over here for the end of it to sort of wash it out at the very end. With snares, or with this one specifically, this compressor is doing a lot of work. You can see that. It's just transient shaping because I wanted a rounder transient. Without it, it goes. Right. And then with it, it sounds like. It just sounds more organic that way. Um, you can do that with a transient shaper. I just like doing it this way. And I also have a transient shaper after a Right. And then like all together. And then this is actually adding a lot. Um, the way I process this break, you probably know this break if you're, you know, a person that exists. chopped it up, added this distressor to it, which is just like a super extreme compressor. I like putting it on brakes because it adds a certain kind of compressed sound to it that you don't really get from other compressors. The opto thing is just the optimal spot that they think you should put it in to get that sort of distressor sound out of it. So that's why I put it at. And then I used ST4B, which is the best transient shaper ever. It just brings it back out, even though I compressed the hell out of it with Empirical Web's Distressor. Go buy that. I'll put it down there. And then with this, there was like some hi-hat that was being super annoying. Um, so I just compressed the absolute hell out of it with this. That first hi-hat. And some more EQ. I normally don't like to do that much processing to the drums, but it's a break, so you kind of have to. And then I was side-chaining... 
the snare out and a little bit to the kick. Not that's not a little bit, and I added this delay because I thought it sounded cool. But it just adds texture to this. Without it, it sounds like this. And then with it, it's like, you know, it's like putting the spice on afterward. It's like I grabbed some Italian seasoning and threw it on my drums. And then with the first drum, same kind of deal. Um, I fought really hard with this kick. Um, it took me forever. But what I realized, and I tweeted about this, actually, I'm not calling it X. I tweeted about this is, you know, RMS where it means square is like you get loudness per how much sound happens in an amount of time. But that has two factors to it, the amount of time and the amount of sound. So if you keep it longer, in this case, I was using ShaperBox to look at it. Again, shout out a little bit longer. It actually sounds louder than if I were to smush it really hard with a clipper like I was like this and keep it much shorter. It just sits better in the mix that way. And then you can clip it later, you know, whatever. For this, I used a kick that I stole from someone. Stealing kicks is always morally correct. Um, this is that, that Astro Wandering kick again. This and this. So. Sounds nice. I wanted it to be kind of stompy. Um, this was just kind of annoying and I wanted this thump still so i pulled this out it was boomy i could really tell in my car and this is why you car test folks i could tell in my car it was playing the whoo noise so i cut it out and then recompressed it with a dynamic eq without it it's not super noticeable until you play it in a car and then it is distressor again i did this comb filter this is a fun thing to do um, if you put a comb filter kind of low on a kick and then you set stereo on, you get this sort of like flaming sound. And the lower you go, the more it flams. It's just a cool sound. Um, but I only wanted a little bit of it because this kick was already pretty stereo. And then this is just clipping a little bit. I say a little bit. It looks like a lot, but it was doing it a lot more. And then this is a sort of industrial sounding snare, which is. That's really the tone. Same principle for all of it, you know, like saturating it together, EQing, compressing, whatever. Getting some transient out of it with a compressor. And then another transient shaper. You know, sometimes it's not pretty, but it works. The hats sort of sort of as an homage to the original. I had these. But then I also wanted it to sound more industrial, so I added these from Addictive Drums. Together. So it's sort of like getting that transient from the samples, and then the more organic ones are like filling out the space. Um, and then I slowly layered upon it. And then I added this. I just cut out the rest of it because I didn't want it, but I thought that part sounded really cool. It sounds really like computery. And again, this break. Oh, sue me. Um, and then this. This is from the Rumble sound pack from Here You Go. This guy's pretty sick at helping out with bass music and stuff. In this, I don't know if he still sells this sample pack, but it has a bunch of good stuff in it. And then altogether, it's like. And like the way that I'm wearing is completely on purpose, like the the marching toppers going. So it's like a. Uh, pre-hit for the kick and then kick. You know, it's like adding groove to it. It's like anticipatory stuff and then like complementary inverted stuff with the like syncopated whatever. Percussion isn't necessarily 
something that's just like a means to an end. It can it can be its own voice. And I think that's something that a lot of people can learn from when it comes to electronic music. And then at the end here, I added this little kick. So it like ac accentuates the quarter notes at the end. Right. Cool. I was asked by S. Wynn if I could look at these fills. So I will. This is something I stole from another song. I don't remember what song, but this triplet thing. I just thought it sounded cool. But yeah, that's Addictive Drums again. This thing just added some processing to it. This fill was fun. So originally I had this because I wanted to use rototoms, but finding a good rototom sample library is really hard. Um, and again, like it's playing on the rhythm. So it's like always on the back end of the pattern. So this is going. So. Yeah. So it's going. Right. It's just fun rhythm stuff. This we did a djembe at first. With a bunch of reverb. Why does it sound like that? And then I froze and flattened it so that I could uh, do this to it. Just cut it out. And then some stuff from Damage 2. Just to accentuate that in the low end. You know, and I sort of did something similar here, but with the tom. That's also addictive drums, I'm pretty sure. And then over here, we had the same fill, but I wanted it to be like more impactful in the second drop and like cut out really hard as soon as this laser hits. So I had it like sort of playing like a more um, sustained pattern on the damage part. So then that sounds like. It's like doing the inversion of what the djembe is doing. You know, it's like playing off of each other in patterns of three and then it cuts. Oh yeah, and then I have this amen break. Everyone knows what the amen break is. Reminder by this. And that's just pitching up. And also, how could I forget? The fill. This is from a song. <laughs> this is in the original too. I used gem dopamine to get some high end, some overdrive reverb that I cut out immediately, some more distressor to compress the absolute hell out of it. Sounds like that. And two last things with the drums. I like to do drum reverb buses now. I don't like putting a bunch of reverb on everything unless it's like for effect. I think it adds a little bit more glue to everything to be able to have this, right? Makes it sound like it's in a room. But then also for this first part, I wanted it to be a little bit crunchy and stompy. Um, so I did a bus for Good Hertz Lossy which is just a downsampling plugin basically, but like in a very digital way, it's pretty cool. And then I sent a bunch of stuff to it and it sounds like this. Basically like noiseifying it um, and then put it really far down in the mix. So like. You can barely tell, but it's adding like a noise for it. That sounds crunchy, I think. If I turn it up. And I'm also sidechaining it to the transients because I don't necessarily want it to get in the way of the transients. There's like two more things I want to go over. So these vocals. Basically, I was talking to Cyberoli one night and I wanted some vocals in this, but I didn't really want singing. And I was like, oh, I'll sample something. She was like, wait, I had this idea. And then she sent me uh, this. The monsters take shelter in the caverns we've made of this planet with our needs. And I just wanted to turn her into like a cyber witch or something. So I did the old reverse reverb thing. The monsters take shelter in the caverns. Which is basically you just reverse the whole thing add a reverb to it, and then reverse it again, freezing and flattening in the process. 
and it adds like a pre-tail to everything. It's creepy sounding. Then we have the normal voice. The masters take shelter in the caverns. We but I uh, form and shifted her down a little bit. You know, just standard vocal processing, EQ gate, some DSing, compressing. And then we have this octave down version. The masters take shelter in the caverns we've made of. But with this dimension expander on all the way up with the size up a little bit to make it sound like it's sort of reflected in a space. Kind of like, you know, Dune or the Dathomir, which is from Star Wars or something like that. The masters take shelter in the caverns we've made. And then those together sound like this. The masters take shelter in the caverns. And then we added a chorus saturation. Some more DSing. This echo. Reverb, compressor, EQ, soothe, and then a limiter to glue it. The masters take shelter in the caverns we've made of this planet with how many It's not really doing a whole lot. It's just like when things get too loud, it catches it, which happens like once or twice. So then I freeze flattened that and then I recorded it over here. And I did this thing that McKay taught me how to do, where basically you just add a bunch of Glitch plugins to it, right? So we have all these take lanes. And then I, you know, you just piece them together. So that comes out as. And then I just added the soothe because it was being annoying at certain parts because glitch. This is interesting. Um, this is something that I didn't realize until much later on in my journey how to do this. But basically, if you take something like this. You can actually do this with um, Ableton's multiband compressor. Same deal. Um, if you turn this up, you are effectively turning the ratio up if it turns blue. But if you turn it down and it turns dark blue, you're doing a one to a negative ratio. You're expanding it. And since this is downward, you're expanding downward. And what that effectively means is that the lower something goes, it will push it even the lower. It's like compressing it to the floor, basically. So I did this here because it was a little bit muddy because of the reverb. It just like produces the ambience. And there's literally a preset called Produce Ambience that does that. And then there's like three more things I want to go over. So we got this. Fill in the second drop. This is something in another project. I'm going to go over it in a second. This is just distorting this to hell. This is me stealing from Ghost Data song Sirens Call. <laughs> he actually made a video about how he made this sound. And uh, it's kind of funny. Also, that song's a banger. But yeah, I did a call and response thing. So I did this. And then you have that da 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 da. And then I did it a second time um, over here. Right? So we have this Reese. No, wait, that's not the Reese. We have this Reese. We have this thing. Um, and then like the rave stab thingamajig, but with a pluck layer under it. So it has some weight. So then it goes. And then the first one goes. You know, A and B. So yeah. This thing. I'm going to open the project now that that's in. Whoa, and here we are. Um, so basically. I knew what kind of sound I wanted. And it was me messing with. Basically, I wanted this sound to go through this kick. And I used 
Alexander Panos's spectral morph to do that. And basically what I did is I recorded it up on channel two and I just went like this. There's actually like a video on Instagram of me doing this. Cooking up. And then, if I can remember this correctly, so that turned out into this, which is something. But then I wanted it to have more tone, so I added, which is this classic FM on FM saw thing. And then I did the same thing where I just played it on over again and use the Alexander Panos Timber Resynth. And I really like this form of sound design. I think it's kind of neat. Um, it's like spectral layering almost like you're layering the spectral profile of sounds together to get something unique it's kind of it's kind of an interesting way to do things and then eventually after doing that for i don't know how long uh it came out with this so then from there we compressed it with the stressor again this is distressor trash two better than trash three he did an EQ, accentuating, accentuating some of those harmonic frequencies. So like... It gives it that tone. And then ran it into Saturn. Jumped over me for some high end. Did some... Did some filtering. Um, but I think I ended up doing this in the project later on. AP Shaper, Goo Compressor for some clipping, which I don't know why I did that, to be honest. And then I was just looking at what it looked like, I guess. And then to hop back into the project really quick, we now have this file, which, uh, yeah, so that sounds like, uh, this. There's a reverb automation. This is definitely being helped by this oxide tape a little bit. Sounds nice. And then we have a, re a reverse reverb. That goes into it. We have this EQ, turn down some of the sides, and then a reverb automation. Just for that. But yeah, and now we will look at the mastering. Um, so I actually mastered almost everyone's remix. Uh, you should go listen to all of them. Orphan and Ghost Data did their own because they do their own thing, and I definitely would not have pushed it as hard as they did. <laughs> um, not that it sounds bad. It sounds good. Hello there, Future Kindred. Um, I actually asked to master everyone's remix and told them it was not a big deal if they wanted to do one on their own. Just to clarify. I just don't do that. Um... So, so far as mastering goes, there's not really like a one chain that I use, but there is some things that I go back to. I always use Pro L at the end, and I almost always use TDR Limiter 6's Clipper. And that's just because I like the way that they sound. Right, and then going into that, it's like this. also always watching a frequency analyzer and doing references just to make sure that it's getting the sonic profile that I want. VSM3 to get some more harmonic excitement out of it. You know, it's literally what this is. It's a harmonic exciter. Um, it's hard to describe what that means without just like showing you what it sounds like. So without it. And then. It's just driving something into a model that gives it more harmonics, makes the harmonics denser. And then I use the CQ, Slicky QM. You don't really need this. I just like it. You can turn the display on and it shows what you're doing. I'm not doing a whole lot, um, but I am boosting the sides like two decibels. And that's something I pretty commonly do on masters is boost the high end and the sides, but that's just because of my setup. Pro MB is doing a little bit of compression of just the sides, again, just to make them a little bit more consistent because they were out of control in certain parts.
another EQ just to cut out that ultra low end to give me some headroom to cut out the sides down here. And again, you do want to do this in linear phase. Um, Weiss MM1, which I think is a really nice maximizer. It kind of pushes everything together. It makes it sound smushy. I don't always use this, um, but I wanted it here. And then again, the clipper into the limiter. The trick here is like you want to clip around two decibels is what I find. Um, I'm using brick wall here with an E of three. And then the limiter is not doing that much work. And would you look at that? It's very loud and I'm not doing a whole lot. It's almost like a lot of loudness comes from the mix. But yeah, that is the project. Um, if there's anything that I didn't cover that um, you want to see, I can definitely go back in, do some shorts, do some short videos um, going over it. I can talk in my Discord. Discord's down there. Um, yeah, uh, go stream Demise 2. Go stream all the remixes. Thank you very much. Goodbye.